What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of It's Called Football. As always, I'm Jerry Walker. Alongside me is Jackson Biden. Jackson, how you doing on this Friday afternoon or Thursday afternoon? Yeah, dude, it feels like Friday for me too because I don't have class tomorrow except for my online bullshit. But hey, that doesn't doing, count. Doing, doing all right, doing all right. Desperate need of a haircut, but right. you and me both. Yeah, <laughs> F it, we ball. Ready to talk some fun. Straight. And this been uh, we had some midweek action. It was obviously FA Cup last weekend and some okay results. Nothing too crazy to talk on there. We did do an episode in between that, so get it going. We had Tuesday matches, Wednesday matches, and two matches today, including probably what was the match of the week, which to both of our annoyances went the way we did not want it. We'll get into that one a bit later, but kick it off. Um, Aston Villa, Newcastle, first one on the docket. Newcastle took that one 3-1, and I expected more from Aston Villa. I did too, especially after what happened on opening day where they were completely outclassed. You figured the reaction's coming, especially because they're playing at home where they have been so good all year. And then I guess Newcastle just has their number. You know, oh, yes. it, wasn't, it wasn't like it was like, oh, uh, like, uh, so I'm like, it was 3-1. to one. Yeah. So what, what was the first one? 5-1. You lose 8-2 on aggregate. That at that point you just that team's got your number. Oh yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that it's like a boogie bogey team. You just can't get by them. And unfortunate for Aston Villa, ended their undefeated, unbeaten streak at home. First loss. Now we only have Liverpool, who has yet to lose at home, and Manchester City. So something there. But it was really the story of that first kind of the first half. Put it away for Newcastle. Fabian Schar had two goals, 32nd minute, 36th minute. So it was that quick one-two that kind of gave the Gordies some momentum. And then an own goal by Moreno in the second half. And Ollie Watkins kind of got a consolation goal. So it wasn't wasn't anything great for Aston Villa, but it's they still outshot, they outpossessed. This was one of those things that Newcastle just found the way to get it done. And that's what matters at the end of the day, you know. And uh, it's unfortunate. It's not devastating for Villa in terms of where they're at, what they want to accomplish, you know. But just from a morale standpoint, that's one you really wanted to have, you yeah, know. Absolutely. Because you were right there. And, uh, yeah, it's really disappointing. Yeah, there's been three bad results in a row. Obviously, one of them was the FA Cup against Chelsea over the weekend. But – Nil-nil to Everton on the road last week. Nil-nil against Chelsea in the Cup, and now a 3-1 defeat. We kind of predicted this happening. We thought Aston Villa would fall off a bit. I didn't think it was going to be this soon after uh, Christmas time, but hey, it's the Premier League for you. It moves very, very quickly, and now they have a busy next couple of days, three matches in the next 11 days to this week with the Cup replay on the 7th. Yeah, the lucky news for them, though, is they are still seven points ahead of sixth place. Mm. They're tied for fourth with Tottenham, and they're only three points off of uh, Arsenal and City, even though City has that game in hand. So they're still right there. No, absolutely. Like, it, it's not that big. It's not, again, it's not great. You really wanted this, but it's not catastrophic. No. You're still clear in the fight for Champions League spots. At this point, it's looking like a five-team race with that seven-point gap that's kind of formed. But from a Newcastle perspective, this could be huge because now they're in eighth place, 32 points, three points off of seven. They're they're not getting Champions League this year. They're not getting it. But they could get European uh, action. I mean, Liverpool, if they win the uh, League's Cup, there goes another spot right there for uh, Conference League. And I'm assuming one of those teams will likely win the FA Cup. That's usually how it goes, where one of the teams is already in wins the FA Cup. No, made in stone. You heard it here first. That I would be very on board for that. <laughs> that would be absurd. Unfortunately, I don't think that'll happen. That'd be beautiful. But Newcastle now, they've got a shot. Yeah. They've got a shot. They're in eighth place. So there this could be something where maybe they get a little bit of momentum. Because no one goes into Villa Park this year and wins. Yeah. So and, and, and in the way they did is Three yeah. months kind of domination. It was just a late goal for Ollie. They kind of got it back. And it's looking at Newcastle's upcoming fixtures as well. Very, very, very favorable matchups for February. 
Mm-hmm. Home to Luton at Forest, home to Bournemouth, and then away to Arsenal on the twenty fourth. So it's they could they could win those first three. That could be nine points in three matches heading into that Arsenal one. And nine points as of now will put them at what forty one, which would be just on that outside of fifth place. Well, obviously everyone else still has to play, so we'll see what happens. But you win those three, and you're in a good looking good for the time being. You know what I just realized really unfortunate my mom for christmas bought me this really expensive microphone out of nowhere for this stuff totally forgot to plug it in and use it. it's just sitting there huh looking at me you hear heard it here first folks next week jackson's gonna be even more clear on the mic. should be anyway let's get back on track (laughs) (laughs) exactly that's the perks of this show you never know what we're gonna talk about there was a point where we were talking iowa football dude i'm i'm down to talk new oc I'm down to talk any day of the week. I always um, throw in little comments in the Slack group chat, and no one ever responds to my little Iowa shit. No. They've only no. ever said one thing once. And it's kind of like Iowa's just sitting there. But Yeah. Um, we'll see what happens in the new Big Ten. But back to the Premier League, moving on to your other, your other football team, Arsenal, took on Nottingham Forest this weekend, and it was a 2-1 win. Gabriel Jesus getting on the score sheet, which also kind of surprised me a bit there. Yeah, he's he's not a great goal scoring nine. <laughs> you know? I don't know. I don't know what it is with these Brazilian nines who can't score when you have Firmino and Gabby Jesus playing at these top clubs. Mm-hmm. You just can't score, but he scored this game. He did indeed. I'm not gonna lie, I, I was getting pretty frustrated. I turned off the TV because I figured that they would do better if I turned it off. I got that superstitious and it worked. Yeah. So I'm just saying maybe that's the secret sauce right there. Um, I'm watching Arsenal for you, and you might you might win a title. Yeah, maybe that's all it takes is me not tuning in. You know, maybe I've been doing it wrong for the last, I don't know, how old am I? Whatever, decade. Yeah. So, yeah, but, I mean, it's great that they got uh, – finally got some um, – got the well, not finally. They got the points, though. Yeah. That was the key thing. Coming off of the 5-0 victory against Palace – Got to keep momentum going. And it was looking really rough for a while. Not in terms of, like, possession-wise, but I'm watching this game. I'm like, we have so much of the ball, but nothing to show for it at all. That did, Like, even if there were chances, you get in the final third, whatever, it didn't look like we were going to score no. at all, you know? And it took until the 65th, and then obviously seven minutes later, he had that second one. And, of course, Iowa Niwi makes things interesting, just like what happened in the first game. Uh, that the two played earlier this season. But I, I don't know. This didn't feel very convincing. It really didn't. No, and I mean, looking at the stats, 74% possession for Arsenal, 26 for Forest. so you expect more of that. They both only had three shots on target, so that's something else you got to take into consideration. With all the shots off target, six for Forrest, three, off, three were just off, three were blocked. But Arsenal had... 16 shots up that didn't hit the that weren't on target yeah even saveable it was one of those things you got to look at and be like hmm, we need to be much more clinical if we want to make a run towards the title because they're in a good position five points back of liverpool still plenty of matches left to play big match this upcoming weekend which we'll touch on in a little bit but hey it's all still in arsenal's hands i'll put it that way it is. It is. They're they're still right there. They've got a huge one coming up this weekend, which we'll talk about in just a second. It's all good. It just it doesn't feel convincing. Last year felt way more convincing though, and it fell apart. So maybe pick up. Maybe it's better to be laboring along, not necessarily looking as good, but you're still getting the results. So then you can pick it up, you know. Because right now it just doesn't feel convincing watching this Arsenal team. It doesn't feel like there's going to be someone who could score. And it feels like at some point there's going to be a mistake. And obviously there is a row between Zinchenko and Ben White at the end of the game, a little disagreement. Arteta says he loves it. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's good they're demanding more out of each other, but it's not great in a game like this where you should be comfortable that you have two teammates fighting at the end of the game. 100% with you on that one. It's... Even after a win, it's maybe that is something though that he likes is that intensity and it's oh we won, but there's so much more we can improve on in that aspect. But 
Hey, we're not in the dressing room. We don't know exactly what's happening, so can't yeah. talk too I'm, much on that. I am happy that he's uh, kind of uh, spoken up against the Barcelona rumors. Yes. That's... I'm happy he's come out and said that the, yeah. their fake, he wants, he's going to stay, which I don't blame him at all. I think eventually he'll end up back at Barca, his yeah. child club. But I think right now, why would you want to take the Barca job when you've already done the rebuilding and you're finally to a point where you've gotten your team very competitive? Why would you want to go and have to kind of rebuild again? Yeah. So I'm glad that he's stay, sticking around. It, at least that he's saying he's going to stick around. Obviously, yeah. you never know. But that, I think, is a the biggest piece of news to come out of Arsenal's camp this week is that it looks like Arteta will be around next season. Yeah, which is massive because, like you said, he's gone through this whole rebuild to get the team to title contenders. That's really the big story there is he's yeah. changed so much and he's gone through all this stuff. If he was to leave, I think Arsenal would not necessarily be in major trouble, but I don't think they'd be competing for the title. I think they'd be competing for that fourth, fifth place instead. Hard to talk. And, I mean, him going to Barcelona just doesn't make sense. I think they're going to hire – someone else yeah. that has some affiliate has another affiliation with it but maybe they're learning their lesson from hiring Chavi not to hire former players dude deserve you that could be the one i could see that one happening yeah. he's done wonders in the premier league you know huge one to be Xavi alonso just a giant middle finger to uh madrid real madrid yeah just go wow. get Xavi alonso you know i still feel like he's gonna he's going to liverpool I can see that happening completely. But next matchup, uh, the other North London team, Tottenham took on Brentford, and it was one nil at half to Brentford, and then it it escalated really, really quickly. And three goals in eleven minutes to start the second half for Tottenham. Richarlison gets on the score sheet again. He's a new, he's a revamped player since Son and Kane have been out of the lineup. Yeah, he's had to step up, and he's done so beautifully especially in recent weeks, he's finally found that goal-scoring form that we saw at Everton, you know? So he's finally picked it up, which is huge for them because, again, with Son absent, you need someone to step up. And it looks like it's for Charleston. I was wondering if it would be Timo Werner. Yeah. But no, for Charleston, he's he's doing well right now. Yeah, seven goals in his last seven Premier League matches. Timo Werner, you mentioned, he did get an assist on the second goal, which was – scored by Brennan Johnson, so there's that. He is still getting an impact. I think the shithousery in this one was great. I don't know if you saw it or not, but Neil Mape scores a goal 15 minutes in, and he does James Madison's signature Aww. dart celebration. Jeez. And then Tottenham comes out in that second half, scores, and I know they cup, I think at least two of the goal scorers did the same celebration, kind of mocking him for it. And the rivalry and banter went back onto Twitter – and Instagram the following following the match or something that Mape posted along the lines of, hey, we might have lost this one. It was a bummer. But I'll tell you this. I have more goals than James Madison, and I've been relegated less times. So little jab there to the former Leicester, man. Yeah, where, where's this coming from? <laughs> yeah, it's very funny. But back to the match. Ivan Tony scores once again. He's if, if he had been around all season, how good do you think Brentford would have finished? Hmm. I feel like they could be competing for a European spot, maybe a little below Brighton level, you know, okay. a little below Brighton level, not, yeah. not cracking that, but a little below that level, because when you have someone who can score, like we said last week, it's not just that he scores, but he takes so much attention that yeah. other people around him can score, you know, and this, the fact that they're competitive at Tottenham shows just the kind of effect that he has. Cause before that, Brentford was looking like this team. You didn't think they were going to get relegated, but you're like, that's that's a number 15 team if I've ever seen one. You know, kind of that range. Mid-table mediocrity at its finest. Yeah, but now they're a whole lot more dangerous. So, Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, with, with Ivan Tony, this team could be very good. I do think they've got a shot at top 10. Yeah, I like that shout as well, but – Looking at like just the impact Ivan Tony's had the last time before he returned, the last time they Brentford had scored multiple goals in a match was December second against Luton. It's Luton. They won three one. Or yeah, three one. It's nothing special. Since then, they've yet to score. They hadn't scored more than a goal 
even getting shut out against Sheffield United, which is brutal. Since he's been back, they scored three goals and two goals. That's what we're saying. It's the impact that he has on defenders having to focus on him opens up for guys like Maupe and the other guys they have up there. Ben Mee even scored last week. and So it's just one of those things that, hey, he is a different player and he is a very, very talented player. Yeah, he's got to make sure he keeps scoring, though. They're a little too close for comfort to the ball. Yeah, we will get into the relegation stuff briefly. But for that, other matches this week that I kind of want to skim over, we'll start Liverpool-Chelsea. 4-1 thrashing, but that wasn't the true story. Darwin Nunez is that guy. He is that guy. I've never seen anyone hit the frame, hit the woodwork more. Yeah, this man, he he's he's insane at it. It's oh, yeah. it's honestly impressive. I've never seen anyone who can just get so close and hit the post so many times. You know, and with the penalty, it was funny. I was watching with my friends, and I'm like, is he either going top ins, or he's gonna miss in like fantastic in a fantastic way? I thought he's gonna blast it over, and then he just smashes it off the post. He just can never get anything going. He was he hit the post four times against Chelsea. Fortunately, it didn't matter too much as they did run away with it. Diego Hada got on the goal sheet. Connor Bradley scored as well as having two assists. So quite a match for the young defender or young midfielder. So it's an impressive performance. But Darwin Nunez just sold so hard. Yeah, no. It, and the crazy thing is he actually has a decent goal tally on the year. All yeah. things considered, you know? So imagine if this dude could finish. Oh, it'd be unreal. He'd be one of the best strikers in the world. Instead, he's a walking meme. You know, like yeah. and like the one was saved. It was a really good save off the post. Sure, whatever. But the pen, the header. At some point, you gotta get it in, you know? Because yeah. at the end of the day, off the post is still the same thing as missing over or missing wide. Yep. It didn't go in, you know. And I thought he kind of turned it around because he did find his scoring boots as of late and early on in the season, but it's now just same story once again. He's squandering opportunities. This could have very well been a 6 or 7-1 oh. win for Liverpool. And I, Without their best player, Mo Salah, being gone and injured now, it's they stepped up big time, these other players. And Diego Hada has been one of those guys that's just been on a tear as of late. Scored in the last, scored four goals in the last four matches for Liverpool. It's been superb for him. Yeah, that's that's the kind of player he is. Though. That's why missing him to injury has been such a negative. That's why I'm so impressed with this Liverpool team. That even with him gone and like Salah gone now, they're still where they're at. Because you see these guys come back in and they immediately just produce like they're doing. Jota's unreal. Yep. His dribbling, his finishing, just everything about him, his creativity, he's unreal. Like, the impact he has is massive. And it got, and it was shown in this game when he scored the first – yeah, it's the opening goal. But let's get back to Connor Bradley. So, how, my question there is, like, how long do you think it's going to be? Because, obviously, he came in as that injury replacement, more or less, for Trent Alexander-Arnold. Now Alexander-Arnold's healthy, and he's still on the bench behind Connor Bradley. You can't bench him after that. You cannot drop him after that game. No, not at all. You know, because he was not only the goal, the the assist, he was just everywhere. Yep. He was playing really well both sides of the ball. You got to keep playing the kid, you know. The finish was spectacular, by the oh, way. It was indeed. In stride to put it bottom corner like that. I don't know if people realize how difficult that really is. It's friggin' difficult. Mm -hmm. you know, on the ground as well. Yeah, gives him a goal and three assists in his last two Premier League matches. Had two assists in the FA Cup last weekend against Norwich. So it's he's just impacting the game in so many ways that it's been a revelation for Liverpool and gives Jurgen Klopp something to think about as the stre final stretch of the season kind of approaches us. And the thing that's interesting is you look at him and you're like, God, that kid just needs to eat a sandwich. There's no way he can like survive out on this pitch. Yeah. Against all these grown men, these professional athletes, and he's just cooking right now. So you got to keep playing him. That's yeah. That's basically it. you got to keep playing him. Oh, absolutely. And I, 
don't think they will bench him until something drastic happens. But another match. This is probably the most exciting of the week. Just finished a few minutes ago as we were kind of starting this. Man United going to Wolves and what a game. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, Manu was up 2-0 after 22 minutes. You're thinking, yeah, this is kind of over. Sarabia gets a goal, gets a penalty for Wolves to make it 2-1. McTominay, as McTominay does, comes on and two minutes later gets another yeah. goal, gives him a 3-1 lead. You're thinking at this point it's over. 85th minute, Max Kilman gets a goal for Wolves. And now it's like, at least I was thinking, oh, okay, maybe they have a chance to equalize it, get out of there with a point. Sure enough. Pedro Neto does that in the 95th minute. Unfortunately for Wolves, though, 18-year-old Kobe Mainu scores the winner in the 97th minute. As we said, this is just the definition of Fergie time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like that latest stoppage time after Wolves just scored, literally in the 95th minute, to then two minutes later score. And it's crazy that it was an 18-year-old, you know, from the academy. Uh, and yeah, he started the game as well. I don't know how he played. wasn't key. I wasn't watching. He got himself a goal though. He got himself a winner. That's that, That's the dream right there. If you're a kid, is to score a winning goal for your club. So, well, yeah, two goals and two matches for him. So, because he scored against Newport County in the cup this past weekend as well. So he's finding his form and not bad for. A, a, a young midfielder, maybe one for the future to watch out for. Something about the young midfielders this week going off. Bradley, Manu. And this is, I mean, from a Manu perspective, when you've got your young players coming in, because they're known for having one of the best academies in the world, always trying to field at least one player from uh, their academy system. It, this is a great sign for them, you know. I know they just saw, just sold off one of their more – promising players to uh i think it was wolfsburg or vertebra mm-hmm. i'm spacing on it yeah people are pretty upset about that but you got this kid who uh just comes in he's 18 year old and he scores the winner in a premier league game so future looks bright still from an academy perspective it looks like man you still doing things right yes they are which is good to see for them not great for the rest of us but hey is what it is I think the most shocking result of this midweek action was probably what happened in, in Luton. Mm-hmm. Four nil thrashing of Brighton, and they got off to a bad start. Two goals in the first three minutes for Luton. Ultimately, Elijah Adebayo gets a hat trick. Two to result for Luton against a team that has aspirations of going to Europe once again in Brighton. Yeah, I mean, and L- Luton, by the way, 18 shots, yeah, it was... eight on target. It could have been worse. Mm-hmm. Brighton, only, Brighton, who's like, they're good offensively. They only had nine shots, two on target. They had more possession. Don't care if you're Luton. You, you had all these chances. You scored two in the first three minutes. That mm-hmm. is demoralizing for a road team. You know, at that point, the game – is probably going to be over, you know, because that just sets the tempo right yeah. away. And That's dude, good. no, you say what you're going to say? As we mentioned many times before, it's the first five minutes of a half and the last five minutes coming yeah. out that quickly. Man, Kenleyworth Road was probably going bonkers. Yeah. And you assume Brighton just had to have underestimated them because they're loon, because they're in the relegation zone. Because coming into the season, everyone, including me, thought they were the worst team in the Premier League and would get run through every game. Guess what? Now they're out of the relegation zone with a game in hand against the team that's ahead of them, Nottingham Forest. They're 17. They're picking up results now. Yeah, five wins in their last eight matches. Two of those were FA Cups, but if three Premier League wins recently, and so we'll hop into the relegation zone talk, It's they're out of it now. Mm -hmm. They're currently sitting in... 17 or yeah, 17th place with 21 matches played, 19 points, one point ahead of Everton, but they have a match in hand, which is massive. Looking at the future of Luton in the Premier League, it's one of those things that hey, they might be on the way to being safe. 
don't want to get ahead of myself because Everton's obviously appealing their uh, financial fair play point deduction. If that goes back, they're back in it. But hey, they're sitting in a good place at the moment because even Forrest, who's a point ahead of them, has played one more match. So you go out, get a win, get a draw, and you're suddenly right there with them. Yeah, I mean, even if Everton, yeah, like you said, gets the 10 points back, I don't think they will. I hope they don't. I don't think they will. They're still one point away with a game in hand from being out of the zone. Yeah. And it's it's good because for a while we thought, oh, the relegation battle is going to be three teams. It looked like that at the beginning part of the season. It's going to be Sheffield United, Burnley, and Luton Town. Yeah. Sheffield United and Burnley, they're rotting away down at the bottom. I, they're going down. I think they're both done for yeah, I don't. I haven't seen anything from them. But Luton, man, they're 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 getting results, and even in games that they don't get results, they've looked unreal. Two one loss against Manchester City, three four loss with a last minute Declan Rice goal against Arsenal. They can compete, you know. They can actually compete, and they made it real interesting because now you look and there are, let's see, one two three four five six six teams. I can't believe I just had to count that. But six teams that are right there in the relegation battle. Yeah. You know? It's, it's very, very, very close because, I mean, you look at Brentford and Crystal Palace up in 15th and 14th. Palace in 14th has 24 points. They're only five clear of Luton, six clear of Everton, where you lose a couple matches and you're suddenly dragged back into this. Yeah. I'm going to ask you, Jackson, who do you think is – because I think we're both on board of Burnley and Sheffield go yeah. down – who is the third team you think that's going to go down? I'm thinking Forest. Hmm. I'm thinking Forest right now. You know, obviously a lot's going to change. I could be very different because all it takes is one team to pick up a little bit of uh, momentum like uh, Burnmouth did. And just like that, they've got a little bit of safety, you know? So this is a crapshoot. I'm basing this on nothing. But I just I, – I mean, I'm basing on something, but I could be completely wrong as well to get that. I think Forrest right now looks the weakest. I don't think they can defend well. I don't think Matt Turner is going to be the guy to save them in goal. And I don't think they have any serious attacking threat if you take away Taiwo Awuniwi. Now, he is back, so maybe that means that will help him out a little bit. But I think Everton's going to find a way to stay up. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just like a parasitic club. Yep. Refuses – to accept defeat, you know, and I I don't see them going down. Luton right now look has the makings of a team that's going to stay up with the results that they're getting. Brentford got Ivan Tony back. I think they're going to start cooking some some of these worst teams. Agreed. And then I don't see Palace, Fulham, Burnmouth, any of those teams really falling back down to that level. You know, it would take something crazy. Maybe Palace could, you know. But I don't, I don't see that happening. So out of those teams, I think you got to say Forest right now. That's my opinion. Could be completely wrong. They got Iwo Niwi back. Maybe that changes things. Maybe they start picking up results. But I think right now they'd be the team to go down because I don't see Everton going down. And with how Luton's playing right now, I think you got to give them – yeah, give them a leg up on the other teams. Oh, absolutely. I mean – I like where you're at with Forrest. I was thinking maybe them solely because of the goalkeeper issues. We've both talked about Matt Turner plenty of times on here. I really thought they were going to go out and try and get a goalkeeper in this transfer window. Didn't end up happening. They tried to get who? Gulashi. And yeah. Over. yeah. I, I still think somehow, some way, they're going to be one of the teams that stays up. I'm torn between Luton and Everton, which might just sound like, oh, yeah, they're the bottom two right now. But Luton, I'm – it's definitely trending in the right direction. They still have so many brutal matches to come up. Fortunately, it's all spaced out relatively well, so that could be a benefit to them. They do well in those games too, though. That's the thing. All it takes is getting one result there and beating some of the lower teams around them, yeah. which I think is where they're going to be benefited. I think they will get results against the Forest, the Everton, the Brentfords. Yeah. And I think they will stay up. I do think it's going to be Everton that – Finally, after years of teasing, mm. will be the team that goes down. You're thinking, fine, this is the year. I do think this is the year because I think with the point deduction, if it stays, obviously, I think Goodison Park is kind of going to uh, – and that's the fat, big factor for me is Goodison Park could explode, but they have such a brutal stretch of matches. 
kind of in March, especially home to West Ham at Man U, home to Liverpool, three in a row where they could realistically lose all three. Then they play a Bournemouth side that's kind of erupting at the moment, Newcastle. If you don't get points from that stretch, even a couple, I think it's so long and see you in the future. Interesting. I just – I have a feeling that they're going to find some way because they always find some way. They do. They Even do. though they don't, it doesn't feel like they deserve it, they find some way to just stay up. I think it would be catastrophic if they fall. I think it would. With their I financials, I think it would be catastrophic. Yeah, I could see it being very similar to what happened with Leeds when we were relegated back in 2003, where it's a long, long and painful journey to get back to the Premier League. Yeah. It's only because of that financial issues that it's going to be a crap show. And they're going to have to sell off all their players. They're going to have to restructure things. I think it, they don't have a plan B, I feel like. You know, it plan. you just got to stay up. Yep. Survival is their only plan. And if that falls through, it might be, on my predictions, it's going to be a while for them to bounce back. So we will see. But it's enough of that kind of talk. We're looking at the upcoming week's fixtures, and we'll start off with Oz, and we always do match of the week. We go from the relegation talks to the top of the table talks as Arsenal take on Liverpool at the Emirates. What are you expecting from this one? I don't know. Uh, that's the thing. I have no idea. Uh, yeah, I don't know, because you want to feel confident. You're at home. You've picked up a few wins recently. But Liverpool looks so good. They just – they look so good. I'm hoping we can ride the momentum, ride the fan energy, because I know the fan energy is going to be crazy. It was when we played City this year, so I think it will be more of the same. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping that can carry us through. I know I'm looking at, like, the win probability. They're giving Arsenal 42% chance of win, Liverpool only 32 I think it should be flipped, personally, with how things are going. I know it's at the Emirates, but – Liverpool just looks so good. They're having their replacements come in like Connor Bradley and just ball out. So they're in form, and they've got something to play for right now. Jurgen Klopp may have just won them the title. This might be 3D chess. He may be like, I'm going out with the title. I'm going to announce it now. We're going to ball out. Yeah. Right now, they look so good. They look like they're playing for something bigger than themselves. They're playing for someone. It's like what Argentina did at the World Cup. They all played for Messi. That's how this feels right now. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, I don't know. It's it's at the Emirates, which gives me hope. But I just feel like Liverpool's riding this big wave of emotion right now. That's going to carry them. It might not be through the whole season. You know, I still think City will come back and win the league. But I think for a little bit here, you're going to see them just play out of their mind because they have something to play for. Mm-hmm. And I haven't been convinced with what I've seen out of Arsenal. Bar the five nothing victory, just shaky in the back sometimes. Not good enough in the attack because we have plenty of the ball. We will have plenty of the ball. We will be in the final third. But a lot of times, if it's not Saka, it's no. You know that's kind of been the story. So I don't know. I'm not feeling a hundred percent confident in Arsenal's ability to win this game. I think Liverpool is going to come in and win. 2-1. I think Arsenal gets a goal. But I think Liverpool just looks really good right now. And I think they're going to carry that into this game. And if they do win this game, that could be a huge, huge bit of momentum for them to possibly go on and win the title. Now, if Arsenal wins, I think it really makes things interesting. You know, then it really is – I mean, okay, Tottenham's right there. So, I guess Tottenham Villa could still be in it, but I think that would really kind of make things a three-team race because they've all beaten each other. They all look good against each other. And realistically, I think if Arsenal wins this, this could this will make it a very much a three-team race. I think if Liverpool wins, on the other hand, yeah. this is now officially a two-team race. Yeah, because at that it'll point, Arsenal be can't. Ma- it'll be a massive blow because that'll be I'm sure the other one was the FA Cup earlier in January, but it was, they lost two nil to Liverpool at home. Yeah. And it wasn't like they were being completely outplayed. It was an own goal in the 80th minute. And then Diaz yeah. scored in stoppage time. So that's a, that was a big blow there. Knocked him out of the cup. A loss to Liverpool at home again could be a big blow. And I think they will. I do think it'll be a very similar result. 
I'm going to go 2-0. I'm going to take the same result. I just think something about the way Liverpool's playing at the moment is just incredible. Yeah, like a team possessed. Yep, they're demoralizing teams around them. Other matches that of note this weekend that we were kind of looking at, I'll start with Man U hosting West Ham. Who do you think gets this done? Do you think it's going to be another crazy late winner for Man U or the bubble blower is going to get something going? Yeah, I mean, crazy thing is at this point in the season, West Ham's ahead of Man U, you know, which you'd love to see. Oh, yeah. Those things interesting, plus – we all hate Manchester United if you don't love them. So I'm loving seeing this. I do think they're going to get this win, though. You know, they're at home. They've got that energy. I don't think any stadium, bar maybe Anfield, has that same energy on a consistent basis as Old Trafford. Like, consistently, even if they're bad. Because they've been, like, pretty mediocre ever since Sir Alex retired. Yeah. You know? They still have this incredible energy. The fans are so passionate. I think it helps that they're from Manchester and have nothing else to do with their lives. Personally, that's always been my theory about Liverpool and Manchester teams, why their yeah. fans are so passionate. I mean, look oh. at Everton, same thing. They're right. very passionate. Right. The only one of those four that see outlier is Man City because they don't have very many fans. No. Well, no lifelong fans. They all became fans back in uh, early 2010s. Yeah, 2011. Yeah. yeah. So that's when they all became their fans. But, well, whatever. Forget about that. But I do think Man is going to ride that home fan base. This is a pretty big game. You know, I think both these teams, they could push for Champions League if they started winning a lot of games. I think Man has got a better shot than West Ham. Mm -hmm. But right now, they're looking at just finishing as high as they can and trying to get European action. So this could have very big repercussions come, uh, come May. Uh, I think Man U is going to get it done. They, they're going to have the fan support behind them. They just got a very big win on the road when it took – they took a, a beating at the end, and they still found a way to come out of it. Mm -hmm. So I think they're going to get this done. I think they're going to win 3-1. to one. I think they're actually going to look pretty good. Yeah, I sadly agree with you. I do think they are going to get it done. Surely, though, they did lose to West Ham 2-0 in the reverse fixture, but that was in London. <clears throat> this is in Manchester. I just have a feeling that they're going to get something done. I think it's going to be not necessarily a super late goal, but it's going to be a second half winner for them. I'm going to take them two or one nil. I think it'll be a one nil one. One nil. I think this will be a very defensive match that nothing really gets going, and neither team wants to risk giving away a counter attack. So, who scores? Scott McTominay probably. Yeah. That's just the, always the safe bet. But no, realistically, I could see this being like one of those matches where the only goal is a Bruno Fernandez penalty, something like that. We haven't had one of those in a while. I feel like he's due. Yeah. But otherwise, I mean, this is a must win for both teams if they want to do anything in Europe. Yeah. Point in the point between them. <clears throat> I think I could see a draw happening in this one. If both teams are to score, I don't think it'll be like a 2 1, 3 1 win. I think it'll be a one all draw. But, yeah, I'm gonna back. I'm gonna back Man U just because they've looked better as of late. All right. Unfortunately, but yeah. Hey. So I mean, looking at West Ham's recent fixtures, they've just been dreadful, and against much, much, much worse opposition. Obviously, drew with Brighton, and this came after they beat Man U and West Ham or and Arsenal. Two yeah. big wins there. You're thinking they're gonna start getting their act together. Draw with Brighton draw and then lose with Bristol City, who's a championship side. Drew with Sheffield United in that crazy late equalizer, and then Drew with Bournemouth today. So it's been a bad stretch of stuff. I do think they're going to falter once again. Yeah. The only other one that kind of stood out to me at all, I know we're kind of running close on time here for you, Chelsea Wolves, but even though that one's not the most exciting, that's just a 10th versus 11th place match. We're curious to see which team kind of bounces back from a disappointing weekend. Do you have any predictions or anything on that match? I'm going to back Chelsea. They're okay. at home. They've actually looked all right recently. Like, they – Liverpool dominated them, but Liverpool right now is playing like the best team in the Prem. Like, like we said, a team possessed – 
Chelsea's still kind of in that rebuilding phase. But I do think they'll get this done. They're at home. I think they're going to rebound from this. Give, I think it'll be close. I think Wolves will get a goal. Yeah. But I do think it'll be 2-1 Chelsea. I'm loving that scoreline today. I don't know why, but I do feel good. Yeah, I feel 2-1. Yeah, 2 1 just seems like the fun score to pick because you can see it so many different ways of it yeah, right. unfolding. I am going to go the opposite. I'm going to take Wolves to win. I do think after this brutal Man U loss, I think they'll kind of get their shit together. And we saw Chelsea get ran out of the park by Liverpool. So I'm going to lean towards Wolves. I think it'll be a very close and a very intense match. I'm going to go 2 0 to Wolves, though. I do think Chelsea's attack falters big time mm. and Wolves manage another clean sheet in their third in the last four matches. So, hey. Any other matches you want to go in depth with or you just want to bounce through and get these predictions rolling? Yeah, I think we can just get the predictions going. Yeah, there's nothing too special otherwise. Start with Saturday's matches. First one, Everton hosting Tottenham. I'm leaning Tottenham. On this one i think they've looked better obviously they're up higher in the table looking for a title compared to everton looking for safety give me another richarlison goal i think he's going to be the difference and depending on if james madison's fit or not because he did have a little injury concern the other day give him give me give me three nil tottenham i like that i i think they'll definitely win sorry i I swear to God, there's a mouse in my wall. I've been hearing clawing at the wall. Now I hear like this. I don't even know, dude, but that was throwing me off. But Raccoon. You got a family of raccoons living in here. Dude, there's something. I don't even. Wall's not even that thick. Now we have the I... National Geographic show as Jackson, the apex predator, takes on the <laughs> mouse. <laughs> yeah, see how I fare. But um, yeah, going back to this. Yeah, I think Tom is going to get this done. I think right now they look pretty good. Richarlison scoring is huge for them. They're looking like a they, – they still look like a Champions League caliber team. I think they're going to show their their strength in this game. I think Brighton's going to be a little bit dumbfounded about what happened. Rather than using his motivation, I think they're going to be just down in the dumps. You know, 4 nothing against Luton, who, again, we all thought was this terrible team. That's going to have a lasting impact. So I think Tottenham's going to take advantage of that. They're at home. I think they get the win. Moving on, Brighton against Crystal Palace. What are your thoughts on this one? Who do you have winning in this? Wait, what? Brighton against Crystal Palace. Brighton against Palace. Oh, I was looking at the wrong one, but yeah. <laughs> None? Sorry, yeah. dude, the mouse just... <laughs> the mouse has thrown him off his game. Yeah, sorry. Jeez, you got the battle of two birds, the eagles and the seagulls. Yeah, because I just said Brighton for the last game, didn't I? I was looking two weeks ahead. That's that's my bad. No, you still said Everton and Tottenham. I did? Yeah. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Either way. Either way. Brighton and Crystal Palace is the Whatever that noise is, it got me fucked up. <laughs> Let's get back to this. All right. Brighton, Crystal Palace. I'm taking Brighton. I, I can see that. I, I don't think Palace is very good, basically. That's what it comes down to. I'm not impressed with them at all. Give me Brighton. Give me 3-0. Oh, wow. I was actually going to go with a draw on this one. I think it's going to be yeah. one all. I think it'll be a one-all draw. Just to feel, has that feeling of it's not going to be a pretty game at all. Both mm -hmm. teams have looked iffy at points in the last couple matches. So it's – hey. But with that being said, Brighton needs to bounce back after that embarrassment in Luton. Yeah. What I do think will be relatively one-sided as well, Burnley hosting Fulham. I think Fulham gets it done. I'll go 2-0 on that one. Yeah, I think Fulham's got it. I, Burnley just so unimpressive all year. Fulham's not bad. They're not like they were a few years ago when we were like, holy shit, Fulham's actually pretty good. But they're still a team that you don't think is going back down. Like, And they're going to show that in this game. Burnley's a team that's getting relegated. Fulham's a team that's staying up. Fulham's going to make that clear this game. I like 2-0 as well. Yeah, Another relegation possible team, Luton, away to Newcastle. Who do you got in this one? Newcastle. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Luton's still Luton. Newcastle's still Newcastle. Newcastle's better. They're at home. They're going to win this by multiple goals. Yeah, I picked Aston Villa to beat Newcastle last episode. I'm not making the same mistake again. I'm taking Newcastle as well, and I think they do win relatively comfortably. Go 3-1. All right. 
Sheffield United hosting Aston Villa. I see this as a possible blowout for Aston Villa. I'm gonna go three nil. And I just yeah. think, I just think Villa is so much better. I do too, but I've got a feeling this is gonna be a lot closer than it looks. I think Villa wins, but it's nervous at the end. That's my mm-hmm. prediction. Squeaky bum time. Mm-hmm. Bournemouth Forest on Sunday kicks off that slate or that day of matches. I want to go with Forest, but I'm not confident. I think it'll. I don't think Bournemouth will win, but I think it'll either be a draw or Forest will win by a goal with Ivan Tony scoring once again and being the difference for Forest. Oh God, I'm stupid. Yeah, we're, we're having a nightmare right now. Look, hey, folks, this is just one of those days. Yeah, we're having a nightmare. No, 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 no. not Ivan Tony, but uh, Awo Awo. Oh, yeah, Awo Niwi. Yeah. Awo Niwi. God. Words are difficult, even when we're talking about football. But no, I do think Forrest gets it done, and I think they win by one with a Awaniwi goal. See, I actually agree with you. Yeah, I think they get a they get a win. I think I think they're due one to actually play well. This is the time to do it against a Bournemouth team that yeah, further in the table, further up, actually playing pretty well. But I think yeah, I, I agree. I think Forrest is going to find a way to get it done. I want to use back. Exactly. Huge motivation, huge bit of morale boost. So I think they'll get it done. Now we're talking about Ivan Tony's team. Yeah. <laughs> Brentford hosting Man City. I think his goal is, or his goal scoring streak will come to an end at two. I think City wins this one relatively comfortably. I'm going to go. God, I keep saying 3 0 or 2 1. I'm going to go with a, a little crazy one. I'm going to say 4 1. Really? And I don't think Tony gets the goal, though. See, I'm going 2 2 draw. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I am. Oh, I, I just ha- I don't have anything to base this on. <laughs> it's just one of those gut feelings. Yeah, this is what I did with the Newcastle Man City game. I almost got it right with the three three draw. It ended up being freaking Oscar Bob who ruined that. But <laughs> I'm going two two. I I have a feeling this game's gonna have some fireworks in it. I don't know from where. I don't even know if Ivan Tony's gonna score. But I think Brentford's gonna have at least one moment in the game where they're winning. And their stadium is just going crazy. Going bonkers for the bees. Otherwise, that wraps up all of our match previews. I know we're kind of running a little on time for you, Jackson, but quickly, just a couple more things as the transfer window did come to an end today. Nothing of note. That's the way I can sum it up. It was absolutely dire. Yeah, what what happened? Usually you get something, man. There's been nothing this whole window. And it wasn't even like there were rumors either. It wasn't even like – because usually this time of year we get the Mbappes going somewhere, and I think he is probably going to Real Madrid over the summer. Mm. But that's kind of been known what's going to happen. This just seems like it's just been there. Yeah. I I don't know, man. And, like, when you think about it, basically the only team that's done anything is Tottenham. Yep. I mean, Eric Dyer goes to Bayern. They bring in uh, Ragson and uh, and Timo Werner. And I, I think a youth player they just got as well. So, like, they, they did some stuff. I mean, Forrest gets Gio Reyna. That, that's not going to help them at all. I don't think that's going to help him. I don't. I think this is a terrible move across the board. My but, only thinking behind that Gio Reyna move is that maybe they're trying to bring in another – and this is way out of – way out there. But they're bringing in another American national to try and calm down Matt Turner so he can get to his level. Bring on someone who he's comfortable with. And go that way, but so that why, bring in, why bring in a whiny bitch with an overprotective father? Yep. No, no. That's maybe, he, maybe he needs the English crowd to get him out of his slump. Because people, yeah. if his dad starts whining about something here, it's gonna be away fans are gonna have their time with it, or opposing oh. fans are gonna have a time with it. Yeah, his dad needs to shut up when his son doesn't play well and ends up on the bench. He needs to just. There's good ways of approaching it as a parent, I'll say, and there's bad ways. I think this is a bad way. Good way, I'll look at, like, LeVar Ball. He's very, very vocal, or was, but it worked. Yeah, it did, actually. You were only, only other one that, like, interested me at all was West Ham si- signing on loan was Calvin Phillips, the former Leeds guy. That's the sole purpose. Hasn't played at all this year for Man City. And God, I just hope he gets better for him because yeah. – he messed up big time in West Ham's match today against Bournemouth. Cost them a goal three minutes in. Pretty much his first touch, he passed it away to Solanke, who scored. So, 
Could be if he can get back to the way he played for Leeds, could be a very good move that could see what could help West Ham get European spot. I'm not convinced, but we'll see. I agree. I do think it's a good sign for him because he's going to get those minutes to secure his place for the Euros. Exactly. It's hard to justify bringing a dude who never plays, you know, when you're England. Oh, yeah. When you have so many other options and so many players stepping up. And... Yeah. Cause, and for West Ham, on paper, this should be a good sign. Obviously, rough intro, but it's his first game. Mm-hmm. Nerves. He messed up. He hasn't had a whole lot of first team minutes. Give him a little bit. I think I think this will end up being a good transfer across the board. I think this is the only one that I, I do like Timo Werner to Tottenham. So I guess not the only one. Well, the only like deadline day. Yeah. In week one. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. I think it's benefits Man City because they get him. The worst case scenario, he doesn't play well and they're like, oh, we weren't gonna play him anyway. If he plays well, they'll bring back another midfield talent that can start playing once again. So Ooh, Armando Proha just went to Fulham on loan. Oh, really? That's Find interesting. Something else, yeah. hmm. That could be interesting. Yeah, Not that it's world, like life changing, but no, it's, it's 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 been a weird, weird, weird transfer window. Just quiet, as we said. But hey, bring on the summer window, and I'm sure it'll be very busy, especially with the Euros and Copa Americas happening. Yeah. That's part of my other reason I think it's been quiet is we do have two tournaments ongoing at the moment in Asia and Africa. But Yeah, but with the Copa America and the Euros coming up, don't you think some players would want to make that at least loan move to try to get more game time, you know? I think players do. I just think it's the teams in the Premier League yeah. that are kind of – they're set there in stone with what they have. Obviously, no more moves are going to be happening as the window is shut now until July, but – I just think it's – I just don't think many teams needed to make necessary moves or the ones that did just chose not to and ignored it like Forrest. Needed a keeper. Yep. Didn't get him. But, hey, that's all we've got, Jackson. Any final words or any other thoughts in the Premier League? Nah, all good on my end. Awesome. Me as well. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you click that subscribe button below so you don't miss an episode of It's Called Football or any of our other Vendetta Sports Media podcasts. Thank you guys, and we'll see you next week.